Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, I will provide a brief overview on Zero ETL. These are some reference URLs that I've mentioned over here. I will also have these URLs mentioned in the description of this video. I would certainly recommend that you visit these URLs to get additional information about this particular topic. Let us start this overview with what is zero ETL? Or this could also be a question that could be asked to you in an interview. So let's say if anybody asks you, what is zero ETL? The simplest answer to that question is that it is a fully managed serverless solution that makes transactional data and or operational data available in Amazon Redshift in near real time. So certain keywords to remember over here, fully managed, serverless solution, transactional or operational data, and of course, Amazon Redshift in near real time. Zero ETL is nothing else but a setup integration that eliminates or minimizes the need to build complex ETL data pipelines. And how does it do that? It does that by facilitating point-to-point -point data movement. Now, once you have a zero ETL connection between your source database and your target data warehouse, which is Amazon Redshift, zero ETL will provide automatic continuous data updates. So you don't have to worry about it, right? Every time there's a change in your source database, that, that data will be replicated in near real time and made available in Amazon Redshift. It also helps and enables querying of data silos without the need for data movement. Now this is actually federated querying and it is a feature of Amazon Redshift. And if you know federated querying and especially in conjunction with Amazon Redshift, you can basically query data that is there in Amazon Redshift along with data in other data sources, let's say like MySQL or Postgres. You can again have this data query together without moving the data um, between different data sources. Since zero ETL is connected to Amazon Redshift at the hip, at least right now. In future, it may be enabled for other databases or data warehouses, but right now it is with Amazon Redshift. It basically enables you to query different data silos without the need of any kind of data movement. So as I said, this is primarily a feature of Amazon Redshift. Zero ETL can help you to replicate that sum of the data in Redshift and then eventually enable you to query that data in conjunction with other data sources. It solves many existing data movement challenges that a typical ETL process would have, right? For example, it reduces the cost to build those custom ETL pipelines, any infrastructure upgrades for query performance and optimization, and most importantly, it reduces regular maintenance costs. These are the following sources that currently support zero ETL integrations. So you see Aurora MySQL, Aurora Postgres, and RDS for MySQL. Now let us look at some key concepts. First is integration. So integration is nothing but a fully managed data pipeline that automatically replicates transactional data or operational data from and schema from your source DB to Amazon Redshift data warehouse. Right? Zero ETL is nothing else but an integration. Of course, you have a source DB. This is the database from where the data is replicated into Amazon Redshift. And your target data warehouse, of course, is Amazon Redshift cluster or Redshift serverless workgroup, wherever the data is being replicated to. And you have a destination database. Now, this is the database that you create from a zero ETL integration in the target data warehouse, which is nothing else but red shift. 
Now let us see how does zero ETL work. So as you see over here, you have application data stored in your Amazon RDS DB instances, and you have a zero ETL connection between your source instances and your Redshift data warehouse. Remember we said that once you have a zero ETL integration uh, set up between your source and your target uh, Redshift data warehouse, it provides continuous data updates. So your data will be replicated from your source DB to your target data warehouse in a continuous manner and in a near real time scenario. Now, once that replication happens in near real time, you can have your analytical queries or your ML models working on top of it. Here, of course, you have uh, data analysts being shown as users. This could be any other user. So this is a, a general way to understand how zero ETL would work. This is very specific to Amazon Aurora MySQL, this particular diagram that you are seeing on your screen. So you are seeing uh, Aurora MySQL over here. Of course, it is the source. Redshift is your target. You are seeing there's a transactional log. There's also a CDC log over here. And most importantly, what you will see over here is the CDC streaming. So every time a change happens in Aurora MySQL because of the CDC streaming between MySQL and Redshift, a near real time replication will happen between the source Aurora MySQL and the target Amazon Redshift. The initial sync will take about 25 minutes, but then the necessary uh, continuous updates will happen every time there's a change that is made and that is enabled by the CDC streaming. Now, zero ETL is an excellent service, it's an excellent feature, but it does have certain limitations. Now, the reference URLs that I've shared earlier in the video has all the limitations mentioned over there. Hence, I would certainly recommend that you review through those URLs. But here on the screen, I have mentioned certain limitations that I thought that you should absolutely be aware of before using this particular service. The first one is that your source DB and your target shift should be in the same region. Renaming of the source cluster or DB is not allowed if it has existing integrations. Again, similarly, deletion of the source DB cluster is not allowed if it has existing uh, integrations. Zero ETL integrations currently do not support any kind of data filtering. Again, this could be uh, a deal breaker for certain people that you know who have extremely large amounts of data. So you should be aware of the fact that it does not support data filtering. If your source DB has a blue-green deployment, then it cannot have any existing zero ETL integrations during the switchover. This is a switchover between blue and green. So let's say if your source DB for whatever reason has blue-green environments, you're going in the blue-green deployment fashion, then during the switchover, or in fact, before the switchover, you will have to delete your zero ETL integrations. Then perform the switchover, and then again, recreate your zero ETL integrations. Now, again, this could be cumbersome for certain people. And hence, you should be aware of this particular situation. Also, the initial data sync can take 25 minutes or longer, depending upon the size of the source database. Not all data types are supported between your source DB and your Amazon Redshift. Now, again, this could be one of the critical limitations that you should be aware of. So before choosing your data type on the source DB, right, ensure that it is compatible with Redshift. And again, the reference URLs does have a table, right, that talks about these different data types. The target database is read only. Now, zero ETL integrations aren't supported on target data warehouses 
that are configured for multi AZ deployment. Again, this could be a deal breaker for a few people. And most importantly, Redshift uses UTF 8 collation, which may be different from your source database. And hence, when you query the same data, let's say you're replicating the data from source to Amazon Redshift using zero ETL, because Redshift uses UTF-8 collation, you may see that there, is, there are certain changes or discrepancies in the query results. So when you run the same query on source, you get a different result versus when you run the same query in Redshift, there are certain discrepancies that you will see. Again, this could be a deal breaker for a couple of people. So these are the limitations that you certainly need to be aware let us look at some of the benefits of zero ETL. I think by now you should have kind of figured this thing out. Of course, it reduces the data engineering effort. That goes without saying. It uses native cloud technologies. It also reduces the infrastructure development and maintenance costs. And most importantly, it provides real-time or near real-time data access. Use cases, federated querying. As I said earlier as well, this is a feature of Amazon Redshift which allows you to query multiple data sources, could be especially data silos without any data movement. So zero ETL can help you to uh, migrate and replicate certain data and then enable uh, Redshift, which is literally tried at the hip to zero ETL to basically uh, perform any kind of federated querying. Data streaming and message queuing platforms that ingest uh, real-time data. So if you have that kind of platforms, then certainly this could be a valid use case for you. And most importantly, if you have use cases that require any kind of seamless data replication between source database and target data warehouse, of course, that's a perfect candidate for zero ETL integrations. Pricing. There are no charges for zero ETL, although you need to pay for the resources consumed. For example, your source DB and of course your target data warehouse, which is Amazon Redshift. But Amazon does not charge you to create a zero ETL integration between these resources. So I hope that this overview was helpful. I will be creating a lab around this as soon as possible. Till then, take care. Bye bye. Do post your comments and this is it from me today. I will see you soon in some other video. Bye-bye.